Hi guys, so in this lecture video, we will learn about aqueous solutions. What is an aqueous solution? And the reason why that we need to learn about aqueous solution is because this is the most common types of solution in chemistry. So very, very common everywhere around us, they are aqueous solution. So thus it's important we learn about them and recognize what are the aqueous solution and learn how they are formed. So first, let's dissect the word aqueous down a little bit. So first, we see the word solution in it. What is a solution? A solution is basically a sample, a sample of matter that has two or more substances in it. And each of the substance in a solution retain their own chemical identity. So again, a solution is a sample of matter containing two or more substances. And the substances can be solid, liquid, or gas. And each of a substance retain its own chemical identity. And we'll go over some of those examples in a little bit. And in most typical solution, solution tend to be uniform in their appearance and property throughout. An example would be a cup of coffee can be called a solution. And now, so to see why the cup of coffee would be uniform in appearance, we can see that when we make a cup of coffee, it look it, it is a black cup of coffee with sugar in it, and then it look uniform throughout. And if we were to drink the coffee, every sip of the coffee tastes equally delicious. And the reason why is because again, it is uniform throughout. So whether we take the first sips or the last sips, then they all equally taste the same and all equally delicious. And here are some of the other examples of aqueous solution out there. Sodium chloride dissolved in water can be called an aqueous solution. And again, I will go over the word aqueous in a little bit, uh, but then uh, in a little bit. So now let us go over the word solution. So again, a solution can is a sample that consists of two or more substances in them. The substances can either be a solid, a liquid, or a gas. We can have a liquid dissolve in a solid, or a gas dissolve in a liquid, or a gas dissolve in a gas. Any of this physical property right here. So if we were to have sodium chloride dissolve in water, then basically what happened is we have a solution in which a solid is then dissolved in a liquid. If we were to have a a solutions of ethyl alcohol in water, then now ethyl alcohol is a liquid and water is a liquid as well. So now this is an example of a solution where we have a liquid dissolved in a liquid. And if we were to have a carbonated water, or basically CO2 in water, then now we can have CO2 is a gas and water is a liquid. So we will have a solution in which we have a gas dissolved in a liquid. And if we were to have a mixture that consists of sodium chloride and sugar mixed together, then still what we have is still a, a solution. And this solution right here has solid dissolved in another solid or two solids are mixed together. And again, yes, we can have solution of two solids mixed together. And air in the atmosphere is an example where we have a gas dissolved in gas. So there's a lot of gases in the air, right? For example, oxygen gas, carbon dioxide gas, nitrogen gas. So we may have different gases that are mixed together and that still form a solution. And if we were to have soda, so in, in this case right here, this solution consists of a lot of substances that we can identify. We can have solid and that would be the sugar in soda. We can have the gas, that the combination in the soda and liquid. So in this case right here, we have both solid, gas, and liquid combined together in one single solution. So a solution consists of two, uh, of least two different substances in them. And those two substances right there, or those two components, are further classified as solute, as solvent, as follow. So a solution, it can be further classified into solute and solvent. What is the solute? The solute are basically the substances that are present in a relatively small amount. So if we give, if we are given a solution, whatever substances that are present in a relatively small amount, 
we call that to be the solute. And now the substances that are present in a relatively larger amount, that would then be called the solvent. In, a, in most aqueous solution that we'll be seeing, then normally the solid or the gas are the solute. And the liquid that are used to dissolve the solid or the gas are then called the solvent. So that is the most typical type of aqueous solution that we see. The liquid is the solvent and the solid or the gas are the solute. And earlier we have seen of the word aqueous solution already. An aqueous solution is basically a solution in which water is the solvent. So if the solvent here is water, anytime we have that, then that will be called an aqueous solution. Okay, so please remember that definition of the word aqueous solution. It is a solution in which the water is the solvent. And now let's try some of this practice problem right here. Identify the solute and the solvent in this following solution and determine if the word aqueous solution is relevant in each of this case. So first, seawater. If we were to have seawater, what would be the solute and what would be the solvent? And can we call this an aqueous solution? So first, in seawater, we see there's a lot of salt dissolved in it. So therefore, the salt chemical form of salt is NaCl, and this would then be our solute. And now there's a lot of water, right? And in this case right here, because there's a lot of water, the water would then be the solvent. And now can we call this an aqueous solution? And the answer is yes. Why? Because water is our solvent. So this would then be an aqueous solution. And now let's try another example. Drinking wine. About 12%. Most wine are to about 12 to 13%. So what would be the solute and what would be the solvent? So here in this case right here, wine consists of ethyl alcohol. And the concentration of the ethyl alcohol is 12%. So it's basically 12% of uh, by volume of our ethyl alcohol. And therefore that is the component that is smaller in amount. So therefore that is our solute. And the solvent would then be water. The rest of it, the most of it would then be water. So therefore, there's a lot of water, and that's why water is the solvent. So again, can we call this an aqueous solution? And the answer would then be yes. Said water is the solvent. Therefore, this can be called an aqueous solution. And another example, rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol is basically where we have isopropanol, dissolved with water, mixed with water, and it's actually 90% ethyl uh, isopropyl alcohol. So here in this case right here, water, the rest of it, 10% is water. So water would then be the solute. Okay, so that's a tricky one. Because water is the component is, that is present in the small amount, in this case 10% water. So therefore water is present in small amount, and that is our solute. And our solvent would then be the isopropyl alcohol. That would then be our solvent. So now, can we call this an aqueous solution? And the answer is no, not based on the definition of how we describe an aqueous solution. Because here in this case right here, the solvent is not water. So this is not an aqueous solution. And lastly, soda. So what are the solute and solvent in soda? So in soda, we see that we have sugar. And there's not a lot of sugar, right? Well, there is a lot of sugar, but then not as much compared to the amount of water. And we also have carbonation in it as well, or CO2. So both of this, our, our solute. So you have two types of solute. And now we have water. And water would then be our solvent. And can we call this an aqueous solution? Then, yes, because water is the solvent. So this would be an aqueous solution. And now, let's dig in to see how a aqueous solution is formed. So we see that 
an aqueous solution is a solution where we take a substance and we dissolve that in water. But have we ever asked ourselves, or have you ever asked yourself, what happened when a substance is dissolved in water? Okay, so when a substance is dissolved in water, here's what happened to it. It will break apart into individual particles. And as individual particles, it may be molecules in case it is a molecular compound. Or maybe ion if the substance is an ionic compound. And they are now referred to as an aqueous. For an example, if we were to take sodium chloride or table salt and we add it to water and mix it up, we see that sodium chloride dissolve in water, right? So what happened is that it will break apart into the sodium ions and the chloride ions. And now each of these ions are now referred to as an aqueous because this ion are flowing around in the water. So we call them an aqueous. That's what an aqueous is. An aqueous is a substance that now dissolves in the water. So now both the sodium and the chloride the physical state are now aqueous. Now, here's what happened right here. If we were to take maybe a teaspoon of sodium chloride, a teaspoon of sodium chloride may be a very small amount of sodium chloride, but if we really count the particle in them, there's up to about 1 times 10 to the 23rd of this sodium and chloride particle in it. So that's a huge amount or particle that being clustered together to form this macroscopic solid that we're able to see right here. And because this is a very big cluster of particle, it then become visible to our eyes. And this is why that if we were to, to take out a teaspoon of sodium chloride, we are able to see that fine powder, that crystalline white powder right there. But the minute we add water to it and we stir it up, what happened? It seemed to be disappear, right? Isn't that magic right there? Well, it's almost like magic. But have you ever asked yourself this question? Why can't I see the sugar the minute, the minute that I added the water and now stir it up? Why can't I see it anymore? Now, we know that the salt is still in there, in the water, right? And how we know that is that if we were to drink the water, it still tastes very salty. And that is very much characteristic of the sodium chloride. But now we can't see it. So we know that it's still in there in the water because it still retains its own chemical identity. However, we can't see it anymore. So why can't we see it anymore? Here's what happened right here. When we take this big cluster of this piece of uh, crystalline powder right here and we mix them with water and we stir it up, what happened again? All of this iron right here will be broken apart. So this one 0.2 times 10 to the 23rd particle here would now be broken apart and each of them exists individually. Now, so you can imagine now there will be the same amount, 1.2 times 10 to the 23rd particle that now flowing around in this solution. They're being distributed equally throughout this whole solution right here, but they're not really staying together to form a solid anymore. And because now all of this particle exists as individual particle, and individually speaking, they are too small because now the size will be in a very, very tiny size and that become naked to our eyes and or appear to be invisible. So that's what happened right there. When a solid is dissolved in water, it breaks apart into individual ions or molecule. And because now the individual ions or the individual particle are now too tiny for us to see, therefore they become invisible to our eyes. So that's what happened in the dissolving process. And now furthermore, here's what happened right here. As we take a solid and we dissolve it, once it dissolved already, the particles, solid particle, no longer attract to each other anymore. But now the particle are now interacting with the solvents. And we call this interaction right here intermolecular force. And we'll learn about this later on. But then this is what happened right here. Initially, when we still have the solid, all of this particle right here are interacting with each other throughout. But the minute that we now dissolve this, and if that dissolved in water now, this particle no longer attract to each other anymore. But then they are broken apart, and each of this particle are now interacting with water. 
just like what this diagram right here is showing. Once we dissolve them in water already, the sodium and the chloride are broken apart and now they fall apart from each other. And between them would be water molecule. So the water are now interacting with each of these ions. So we can see a lot of this interaction right here between the particle and the water molecule. So that's what happened right here. The, the particles from the solid are broken apart and now they've been surrounded by the solvent molecule. In this case, that is water. And here is something very important right here. When the particle to water interactions are stronger than the interaction among the solid particle themselves, then water can then break the solid particle together. And that's what happens when they get dissolved. So again, let me repeat this one more time. When the particle to water interaction are stronger compared to the interaction among the particle themselves, then that when the solid will get dissolved in the water. Versus if the particle to water interaction are weaker than the interaction among the particle, then that when water cannot break apart the solid particle, and therefore the solid will not dissolve, or I'd say to be insoluble in water. An example as follows, if we were to take silver chloride rather than sodium, sodium chloride, and we dissolve it in water, silver chloride is actually insoluble in water. So what that means is if we were to take this cluster of solid right here and dissolve this in water, it remains the way it is, but it will not get dissolved. And again, the reason why, because this, the interaction between the chloride and the silver are too strong. So therefore, water molecule cannot come in and break them apart. So that's what happened right there between soluble and insoluble substances. A soluble ionic compound is one that when we add water to it, the particle or the ion are able to make strong interaction to the water. And that interaction is stronger than the interaction among the ion themselves. And therefore, they're broken apart. So we can imagine, go back to this diagram and imagine the following. When we take this solid right here, and we now begin to add water to it. When we add them to water, we are adding a lot of water, right? So each of the water molecules will then come in and begin to interact with this chloride right here. And there can be many water molecules that come in and interact with us. And as this chloride are in beginning to interact with the water, the interaction to the sodium will become weaker. And as they get, get weaker, and now more and more more of this interaction between the chloride and the water are beginning to form, then now it weakens the interaction between the sodium to the chloride, and that's why it gets broken apart. So that's how the particles are broken apart slowly. And this is why that as if we were to make a solution, if when we stir this, then the, the faster we stir, then the more, the faster it will get dissolved, because the stirring actually speed up the interaction of water, and the interaction between water and the ion as well. And that's why that now it gets dissolved.